Hey guys, Brandon Lewis of Embedded Computing Design here, and today we're going to be building an Internet of Things over Bluetooth Low Energy application using the Microchip Curiosity High Pin Count Board, which is equipped with the PIC 16F18875 8-bit microcontroller. In order to do this, we're also going to be using two microelectronica click boards, one, the BLE2 click to transmit gyroscope data from a gyroscope click, also from microelectronica, over the air to a smartphone scanner app. We're going to try and do this as quickly as possible, so let's get started. What we're going to need for our project today is a Microchip Curiosity HPC development board with a PIC 16F18875 microcontroller. You can get that from distributors for around 33 bucks. We're also going to need a Microelectronica BLE2 click, which uses the Microchip RN4020 Bluetooth module. That'll run you about 30 bucks. The last piece of hardware we're going to need today is the Microelectronica GyroClick, which does not use a microchip part, but can be had for about 25 bucks. In terms of software, we're going to be using the Microchip MP Lab X IDE. In this tutorial, we'll be using version 3.61. We'll also need the MP Lab Code Configurator, or MCC, and I'll be using version 3.26.2. The Microchip MP Lab XC8C compiler is also going to be used to program the 8-bit PIC16F18875 microcontroller on the Curiosity HPC. I'll be using version 1.42. All of this software can be downloaded from the Microchip website. All in all, the cost estimate is about 90 bucks and should take us around 10 minutes. So first things first, you're going to want to make sure that you plug in the two clickboards into the Curiosity HPC development board. You're going to be using the microbus headers, which are on the opposite end of the power LED on the Curiosity HPC, which you can see here on the right, which is illuminated green, because I've already attached the USB 2.0 mini cable to the board and my laptop, or your desktop perhaps. Um, upon doing so, you'll see that a blue LED will illuminate on the BLE2 click. It'll be blue and corresponding to the wake pin. And on the gyro click, a green power LED will light up as well. So we're now in MP Lab X, and I've already created a new project. For those of you who need help uh, going through the new project wizard and creating a new project for yourself, uh, see the link on the screen. I've just named this project M-Chip Clicks uh, for simplicity's sake. Um, but at this point, what we're going to want to do is open up the MC MP Lab Code Configurator, or MCC. And one thing that's important to know for this project is that Microchip recently added libraries from Microelectronica click boards through a 50 and 50 program. Basically, they added 50 boards uh, and their libraries to MCC within 50 days, and they continue to do so. Um, and the reason that this is important is that it really helps uh, accelerate development time. For those of you who's, who've used MCC before, you know that it's basically a graphical approach to coding where um, you can easily add resources, peripherals, etc. Uh, without actually having to go in your main C file and do coding. Um, but anyway, here we are now in MCC, and down here to the left you're going to see device resources. If you scroll down a little bit, at the very bottom you'll see micro e clicks. You'll open that up, and then the two clicks that we have are the gyro click, which is under sensors, so open the sensors drop down, double click gyro, and that will add it to your project resources here in the top left. Let's give it a second. And then we're also using the BLE2 click, so that'll be under wireless connectivity. So let's find wireless connectivity. Then here at the top is BLE2. Now, you'll see in the uh, main UI here, there's a little bit of additional information about the clicks that you've added, um, some configuration and advanced settings. We're not going to be using those today, but in case you're interested, uh, you can also go over here and find the product page for the part. But probably more importantly is in addition to the uh, clicks themselves, it also adds peripherals, uh, like here you can see the interface peripherals. Uh, the USART, this is used for high-speed high serial communications with the BLE2 click, and the MSSP1, uh, this is used for communicating with the gyro click uh, over I2C. Um, so all of that stuff is already put into, the, uh, into your project for you. You don't have to do any coding. At this point, we're going to open up the pin manager to help configure all of the pins on the um, Curiosity HPC board with the pins on the two uh, microelectronica clicks. 
And here it'll bring up, you'll see the BLE2 interfaces are here, all of the uh, interface modules that we've, we've added or were actually added for us by MCC. Um, and at this point, it's basically just a matter of transcription. Uh, take a look at the labeled uh, pins over on my Curiosity HPC, match them up with the pins that are um, on the two clickboards, and you're off and running. We're going to connect uh, CMD output to port RC2. And you do that by just locking the lock here. Oops. Um, as far as the connectivity pin, that's RA1. The wake pin is going to be RD0. Then for the USAR communications with the BLE2 click, uh, input is going to be RC7. Keep in mind that when you're uh, mapping these out that the uh, transmit on the click is actually the receive on the board. So what we're focusing on here is the receive on the board. So uh, if you look at the uh, transmit um, on the click, it's going to be the reverse. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, looks like the transmit here is uh, already uh, set. Then RC3 um, and 4 looks like they're already defaulted. Uh, we can leave the oscillator alone. Um, reset's fine. And then for the pin module, we are going to be implementing uh, the pin module uh, so that we can send data when we would like to, rather than just flooding uh, the airwaves with uh, Bluetooth low energy data. And we, we're going to do that through a push button that's connected to pin RB4. Now that we have all of our pins correctly configured, uh, we're going to want to go back up into the system module, and here we're going to play around with the clock a little bit. So um, right now the internal clock is set to 4 megahertz with a uh, divider of 4, and for UART communications, uh, that's going to need to speed up significantly. Um, UART is serial communication, so we need to run the clock a little bit faster. So we'll just go in here to the drop down and select 16 megahertz and change that divider to 1. Uh, another really important thing to note, uh, to note is that the low voltage programming enable uh, radio button should be checked. Uh, for all of the 8-bit uh, microchip uh, PIC microcontrollers, you're going to need to make sure that that box is checked. As I mentioned before, we're going to uh, be using a push button uh, so that we can control when uh, data, Bluetooth, da Bluetooth is broadcasting the gyroscope data um, so we're not just flooding um, the app with a continuous stream and RB4 is the pin that we set. So let's just change this to something uh, that's more human friendly than IO underscore RB4 and we'll just make it S1. And the reason for that is that the, um, that the push button is connected to pin S1. So that's an easy enough name. Everything else here uh, looks to be in order. So at this point we can go ahead and generate code. And just save the config file. It'll save into your uh, predetermined uh, project folder. And here you'll see that the configuration files have been saved and it's complete. So now it's time to head over to the projects tab in the upper left. So you'll see here under the project folder that a lot of different files have been created by MCC automatically. Uh, normally you would have to go through and uh, either bring these in or call them or create them yourselves, yourself, um, but here MCC has generated everything for you so that you don't have to. So there are a couple of files in particular that we're going to want to take a look at before we start coding our application. And the first one is example underscore ble2.h. So you can double click it over here. And the reason that this is important is it basically just shows you exactly what the example application is doing, or at least part of it. Um, here it's just setting up this application, example underscore setup BLE2, uh, then beneath that send message over BLE2. Below that you're going to see um, some things about buffering um, and capturing rece received messages. Uh, we're not going to get that involved today. Um, one thing that's important to note is within the examples and also if you check out the ble2driver.h file, uh, Microchip tried to kind of dumb it down because the Bluetooth spec and Bluetooth low energy spec uh, as well can be very daunting to people who are just trying to get started. Um, so these are kind of, at least with the microelectronica clicks, uh, these are kind of intended to just get people up and running and not uh, dive down into the, the depths of 
of Bluetooth uh, specification drivers, programming, etc. Um, anyway, we're just going to copy these two lines here because we're going to be using them in our um, main C file. The other file that's good to look at too is the gyro.h file and in the gyro.h file you'll be able to see pretty much what we want the gyroscope to do. Uh, gyro uh, underscore read x. Uh, we really just want the x value for that axis. Uh, that's the information we're going to be pulling in and transmitting to the smartphone application. Uh, you could also do the y and z uh, axis values. We're not going to do that today. It's pretty much just to give you a demonstration to show you that the proof of concept works. But simple enough. So let's transition to the main.c file now. And in our main.c file, there are a couple things that we're going to want to do before we get into actually coding the application. And the first uh, is to include these header files to the two that we just looked at, um, as well as the standard SCDIO uh, configuration uh, file, which is just basically a call to all the functions that are standard within C. And we can add these by just hitting include MCC underscore generated files forward slash and then there's our example BLE application select that then do the same thing for the gyro gyro.h and then the stdio header file oops so now that those are all included, uh, they'll just be calling out uh, when we run our application. Uh, we're also going to want to enable uh, global and peripheral inter interrupts. Uh, the interrupts uh, from the BLE2 click uh, will uh, interrupt the processor and uh, help us actually save on some power. Um, and then global interrupts, just make sure that those are all enabled. All of this helps when you're using uh, serial communications. Um, and now we're going to go down into our while loop and p paste that um, code that we pulled out of the BLE2 example, uh, unvoid it. And for the uh, example setup BLE2, we're going to take that line and move it above our while loop. Oops. So just paste it here. And in the uh, name, let's change it to something that's a little bit more human friendly so that when we're in our smartphone application, uh, we can easily identify it. And I'm just going to call it G demo. So use quotes G demo. Uh, below that, we're also going to need to quantify how many characters we want to send um, in, with our message. So let's see, I think we do char uh, message brackets do 15 characters equal curly brace zero so now we're going to want to pull in some of the logic that we uh, initially set up over in MCC and we're the first one thing that we're going to do is uh, bring in some logic around the uh, s1 push button so that we're not just flooding the airwaves with random Bluetooth packets carrying information about uh, gyroscope axis orientation data um, and we're going to do that by putting in an if statement and then we'll say if s1 remember that's the uh, the pin that we defined uh, get value and add in some parentheses there then beneath this is going to be the meat of our uh, application code and what we're going to do here is a print command. So we'll enter a curly brace and then s uh, print f and message comma x equals percent d, which you should remember from when we looked over in the uh, gyro.h file. Gyro underscore read x underscore read x parentheses make sure we add a semicolon there and a couple uh, things to note here um, gonna enter in an ampersand here before the message and also a space before the x equals percent D when I was creating uh, this dry run uh, before I started uh, doing this demo here I realized that there were some 
buggy instances in the smartphone application that I downloaded off of Google Play. Um, and it's just easier for some reason. It just reads uh, the values better when you add in these little um, these little you know, special idiosyncrasies into your code. Um, at this point, we can now go in and update the name here to just message. Again, I added in, I put the, the, the message here inside of quotes, but uh, what ended up happening is in the smartphone application, every time I would send data, it would just report message uh, instead of the actual value. So I'm gonna wanna make sure we do that. Then beneath here, it's a good idea to put in a delay just for accuracy's sake. Uh, so let's put in a 100 microsecond delay. And I need to go back and make sure that I've closed everything up properly. I think I need to add a curly brace here. Um, and we should be all set at this point so we can go ahead and run the program to uh, the Curiosity HPC. Now I'm going to open up a Bluetooth scanner app. That's my uh, wife, by the way. Sorry, Katie. Um, and I just downloaded this from Google Play. And you can see here that um, the Bluetooth scanner app is uh, recognizing the G demo uh, name that I created. So this is our application. And we're going to go ahead and connect to that. At this point, the uh, con button on the BLE2 click is on. And here inside uh, the G demo, once you've connected, we can see a bunch of information about um, the device. So your device information, obviously. But what we're going to be interested in today is custom service. So if you open up the custom service tab, uh, beneath it, it'll show some custom characteristics. And if you push I uh, for indications being enabled, um, once we pick up our HPC board and hit that S1 push button, we're going to start getting some readings. So you see the value there, uh, 11579, that's the X value of the gyroscope. Then I moved it a little bit and 2363, again, again, again. Cool, huh? And there you have it. So one of the important things to remember here is that Microchip is going to continue to add resources and libraries for microelectronic click boards as they come out. And those are both microelectronic click boards with Microchip parts on them and ones that don't have microchip clicks on them. So it's none of that vendor lock-in stuff that you typically find when you're using a software tool. Anyway, uh, if you're interested in finding out more information, you can go to microchip.com forward slash 50 in 50, 50 dash in dash 50. Uh, or you can find all of these parts from distributors like DigiKey. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.